Hello folks and welcome to the Wolf Den. This is the first installment of a new playlist that I am starting and it is called Jetty Wolf Stories. Unless I change it because that sounds kind of corny. But it's all I can think of at the moment. This playlist is starting with not necessarily stories but the whole objective of this playlist is just sitting in the boat sitting on the back porch, drinking a beer, and I'm going to tell you some crazy stories that have gone on in my career as a Jacksonville fishing guide, solo businessman, I guess you could say, one-man show, boat owner. All those things will end up being in the Jetty Wolf stories. And what I'm looking for is some feedback if there's something in particular, like a question that you have, not about tackle or anything, like I'll give you an example. A lot of people always ask me while we're out on the boat, what's the worst customer I ever had? You know, that type of situation or something like that. Or what is the biggest boating failure that I've ever had? Because I've had a lot of boats. Even back during the Clinton era, I had three boats at one time and things were good back then what I'm starting with was a request and I'm sorry I'm not out on the back porch or anything like that I'm in the wolf den that kind of echoey had to pull up the carpet in the wolf den because I had you know a slab leak and I haven't put carpet back in here so I'm gonna try to make the light as absolutely best as possible. I had a request because I did that video about my lure collection that I'm willing to get rid of and move on. I can't go through every single lure, but I can pick out the highlights and the reason I started doing a little collecting of lures that I thought that just kind of fit me in trout fishing and inshore saltwater fishing and that kind of thing. And another reason I'm not doing this anywhere else at this moment is because it's so damn hot outside. I didn't want to do this out there where I've got leaf blowers and chainsaws and drag racing motorcycles. It's a Sunday. I wanted kind of quiet. With that said, uh, this is just a smattering. This is just a little touch of what I grabbed to show you a little bit about my lure collection. And I'm going to start out with modern and then go back. That is a basically a modern 52 MR USA made in Largo, Florida 52 MR Mira Lure Twitch Bait. I was always fascinated with this lure for the sheer fact it's got three gigantic hooks here, right? They use small hook hangers. It's a twitch bait. You cast it out, it hardly sinks. It sinks like one foot maybe a second and you tie off of course here the modern ones of course have red eyes it's got foil inside and as a matter of fact this one is super crinkly that should have been a factory second i have caught hundreds and hundreds of trout on these I was always fascinated with, you know, how a fish reacts to this, especially big, fat, speckled trout. With these big hooks and everything, and as a matter of fact, I'll give you a little, I'll tell you a little quick story. You cast this out, you kind of let it sink, one potato, two potato, three potato, twitch, twitch, one potato, two potato, three potato, twitch, twitch. That's what I used to do. I used to sing a song. It's amazing how a speckled trout can whack the living hell out of this and never get hooked. It's, it's just what started this entire passion, I guess you could say, probably 15 years ago. 
I've used these extensively back when I did a lot more lure fishing. So that's brand new modern. This is a little older and what makes it a little older is what they call the clear eyes. This is what they called and oh wait a minute this one the reason it was so effective around here it's got a little bead in it so when you twitch it it goes click click this is the same basic bait but they called it a TT and it's the one nine trout all right and they called it the TT no rattle it just had spots it's the same thing no rattle but it was a clear eye version, so it's a little older. Then, let's look at this one. It sort of has foil in it, but it's not nearly as shimmery as this, and it's got a painted scale pattern. So, this is a little older yet, because it has, you know, it's just different. Red and white, the old, the old standby. But it's not as pronounced as, and shimmery as that. And believe or not, it's just the technology. So this mirror lure here, being it's a twitch bait. They're all twitch baits. And that means you just let it sink and you twitch, twitch with your rod tip. Different paint pattern. Clear eyes. So then you sort of get even older. And here's the same bait. Now, this one may be a tad older. All right, you can see here that this one, clear eyes, it's sort of, oh, it's a different color pattern. It's a little smaller bait, and you really kind of can't see that foil that great. So these are, these are pretty old. Now you gotta remember, all this plastics and everything really got going after World War II, right? So there's some older ones. These are probably my oldest. There you go. Can you imagine the fish that this one maybe has caught? 52M, 25 color pattern. All right, clear eyes. To this day, they're still doing the hook hangers. But, look, here's a big difference. In the modern ones, this is the modern one, they built this little bracket with a piece of metal that goes into a hole. Okay, if you can see that. That's the modern. Here's the old. And I mean, you know, I've tried. I'm just an enthusiast. I'm not an expert by any means in any of these. I just did all this because it was cool and a little fun. It's, you know, costly, but a little fun. Back in the day when things were great. It was no big deal for me to buy, you know, five of these, trade get an old tackle box that I saw these in, throw the tackle box away, keep the lures. But this one, the center and front hook hangers are actually the screw. The screw goes in on an angle here. So that's really different than the new ones. And the foil, again, is not very pronounced. They come in all different sizes, and I've got all different kinds of sizes. Here's a little tiny one. Little tiny one. Only two hooks. This probably weighs not even a quarter ounce. I mean, maybe, I don't know. It doesn't weigh hardly anything. Then you get into some serious classics by Miralore. Here's one that's never been fished. A 9M18 color pattern floater with a true USA made little prop on the back. USA. And then LNS Lure Company. Miralore was the name of the lure. La Master. And I should know the S. LNS. 
Oh, I can't remember. Damn. All right. But this is, look at that. Under chin tie off, little popper mouth, and a little prop. I've got a bunch of different sort of discontinued, never around. Clear Eye, so Clear Eye is probably the 70s, maybe. I'm not 100%, but it's got the modern little hook holder. So that one's pretty cool. Then, of course, you have all the little fresh water crankbait types, right? The little, I call them the little split tails. All right, so this one, again, old. It's using the screw to hang the hook. All right. When is the last time you saw a little tie-off? That's a little figure eight stamped piece of metal. You'll never see that. And then when you look at them, it says L&S Miralors Sinker, patent pending, 15M. So that is, again, a little more modern. And look at, look at the detail here, how that goes into a hole. That little pin goes up, turns, and goes into a hole that goes into the bait. I mean, we're talking, this is back when these lure companies built things way differently and better. Then, one of the kind of cool things that really, really got me hooked on a mirror lure. This is one that will always stand out in my mind. This is very modern. It's got big, big bulgy red eyes. Nothing antique-ish about it whatsoever. Hook hanger built into the bait. And this is the Catch 2000. This, to me, really started to pique my interest in using mirror lures because I always use those 52 M. you know, I always use these. There could be a lot more modern lures out there. I'll keep going back to this one. I use the heck out of these types. I mean crazy use the heck out of them. And just loved fishing them. My, uh, well, I'm not going to, I'll get into a story about a fish here in a second. The reason this was called the Catch 2000 is this came out in the year 2000. So this bait is already almost 20 years old and I've got a bunch of them. Now they took this kind of concept of a rattling a rattling suspending bait. This, when you threw it, it sank real slow. And when you twitched it, it really, really looks like a mullet. And that is a perfect three and a half inch mullet. I've had, I had a trout that I call grapefruit head because it was so big in a creek, a deep water, swift water creek that you could only throw lures when the current went slack. And I did it at a high tide when the water was clean and green. It's an ocean creek. That means literally pure ocean water goes into this creek, but it feeds back way into the marsh. And I'm on the bow of my bay boat one day and I'm twitching this off the bank parallel to the bank. The bank was here, I was here, and I was casting down the bank and bringing it. I was twitching this, and I made the perfect angler mistake. Twitch, twitch. I could see it. It would go, it, it would dart. It would dart, and it shimmies, okay? And up from the depths comes probably a 10-pound or bigger trout and he follows right behind this. Well, at, that trout was so damn big, I about peed my pants standing on the bow of the bay boat running a trolling motor. You know, the old style with a handle. And if I was on the top of my game, 
that trout, he probably would have ate this. But what did he do? He came up, sat right here behind it, and then sank and swam out of sight. So that's, that's unbelievable right there. But let's talk about a mirror lure, and I may have to do this video in two parts, that has caught me more trout in the springtime and my largest ever weak fish. If you don't know what a weak fish is, around here in Jacksonville, we call them yellowmouth trout. Is the craziest colors in the world. I mean, this is bright yellow, gold foil, fluorescent orange head. I don't care what the eyes are. This is an older model, so it's got the clear eyes. It's got the modern hook hangers. And this is a 52M12 color. It doesn't rattle. The perfect one is the rattler. That crazy one right there, I cast down the South Jetty one time. In the springtime, I twitch twitched it two, three times, and this right here got whacked by a seven pound weak fish. Seven pound yellowmouth trout that took off, burned down the rocks. I thought it was a 28 inch redfish. That right there has caught me my largest weak fish and has caught literally hundreds and hundreds of trout. That crazy color in springtime. The big deal that I started in my, my collection was Miralore competitors. And the competitor would be baits that have foil in them and or twitch baits or Miralore type uh, knockoff, let's say, type. They look the same and they do the same, but they're made by a different company or whatever. Like I believe in the earlier days that this Cisco kid right here is the direct competition to a Miralore. It looks like a mullet. It was made for salt water. It's kind of weighty. It's got the double hooks, big screws in it. Kind of a uh, old fashioned hook hanger. It is, of course, you know, solid plastic, top hook pull, but it's got foil in it with a scale pattern, right? And this is a Cisco kid. All right, here's another one. Here is definitely one that would be sort of a mullet. Very pronounced eyes, just like the uh, mirror lures we're going for. And these right here would be trout, speckled sea trout slayers. So to speed this along, I've got these other ones that are the same, but no name, no marking on them. So I just call them Japanese unknowns. I'd like to think that these were gubrods, but I don't think they are. Gubrod, a plain old red and white. Look at the eye. Where's one? Would you say that's competition, folks? They're trying to compete. More of a little rattle trap front nose on it. Same type of eye. All right? Foil, scale pattern. I would assume that these were probably in the 70s. So I don't call any of these, these are not antiques, they're just vintage at this point. And here's another one, another one. This one here is, I mean, a lot, I've got a lot of these that are in damn near perfect condition. Okay, now this is a Gubrod. You know the people that make, uh, it's the same company that made uh, Dacron lines, they make stuff for rod building. And they bought out a company, I believe, that made these lures with these golden eyes. So it's foil. It's got the big pronounced eye. But this is a little double prop. And this one is literally called the center spinner. All right. So that, that's very vintage. Now let's go to something that is truly I believe that I kind of found out through some research that these people were really wanting to be mirror lure competition, or they were mirror lure competition, and that's miracle fish. They had these little plates on it. I've never thrown one I, that I can remember. Double hook points, you could pull it down, you could pull it, I think it just kind of planed. It was a, 
not necessarily maybe a twitch bait, but a glide bait. You've got the clear eyes, the hook pull points, very simple, and you've got the foil again with the scale pattern in it. Slooping, so it was a dive, and I think it just planed, or glide, was a glide bait, I'm not really sure. But I think Miracle Fish, see, Miralore started out in Bradley, Illinois. I think they kept their offices there, but then they moved to Largo, Florida. And I believe these people were in Bradley, Illinois too, as the story goes. And then they moved down to clear, uh, down towards Largo, Florida also. And here's another one. Different color. Right? And it seems like this is all they made. This one, never seen water. This one is brand spanking new. And I believe one time a guy offered me $35 for this because this is the one he didn't have. I've got the original box for this, which is a clear plastic box that says Miracle Fish in it. But then these people from the old Illinois days made, I believe this was supposed to be a musky bait. All right, double pull points. Look how heavy duty this thing is. You got the kind of foil inside, the big eye, ginormous hooks. All right, so this was a glide bait, I guess, and this was for muskies. So then, as a kid, I distinctly remember a lure that I thought was, no way, no way, this thing is a piece of Japanese crap. Because back when I was a kid, Everything that was built in Japan was junk. Ah, oh, that's junk. That's uh, built in Japan. Then, you know, the, the world global market goes places. Then everything became India, right? And then everything became Mexico. And then wherever the cheap labor was, right? And then there's Taiwan, and then Indonesia, and then Thailand. And then what do we end up now? Everything's in China. So I don't necessarily know where these were built, but this was such a stupid little lure, I thought. These were for sale when I was a young fisherman. In the back, I believe, of like Saltwater Sportsman Magazine, Field and Stream Magazine. This was referred to as a banana lure, I think. All it is is a hollow piece of plastic. I don't even think there's a weight in there hollow piece of plastic with foil in it and hook hangers just screwed in right and a pull point i think i did throw th this one one time in some type of water and it's got like a crap action and i've got these in all different colors and look at you know they were trying to go cheap on the eye and they made a big i wish i had the ad for these banana lures, catch everything from Barracuda to Blue Marlin. You know, total BS. That was BS. These things were crap, but they're cool. They're cool to when you compare it to everything else here, right? Then I went and I started looking into and noticing that there's a whole category of lure collecting called pier bait. So pier fishing. This is old, but everybody's got them. Okay. Any lure collector's got these. See, that is called a coast hawk. And this company went through different generations. Today, if you know what the modern gotcha plug looks like, made by Sea Striker. And now... You know, all the China companies are just following suit. They just make copies. But the gotcha plug, which is a tubular, it's a tubular with two hooks, and it's got a slant front. This is a coast hawk. A lot of people, and that's wood, folks. That's wood with lead stuck in, and there's a lot of work to make one of these, put one of these together, right? Right? And, I mean, they call them Palmer Seahawks, Coast Hawks. Here is a big Seahawk. I've got a bunch of these. A lot of people do. Through wired, 
I don't know what that material is. I don't. I believe. I don't think it's wood. But um, I got really interested in these big ones because supposedly there was a guy down in uh, Costa Rica or something who was remaking something like this because down there all you had to do is drop this over the side and just hold it and lift it up, hold it and lift it up, and the tarpon were eating it like you know no cr like crazy. Same thing as the coon pop out in Louisiana. Okay, very simple bait that just looks like a worm or something just dancing in the up in, in the water column and tarpon would just suck it up. But this one's very weighty. And of course, this one's a little more modern because it's got Seahawk with a registered on there. But here's another pier bait. And I believe this one was sort of handmade. It's got some glitter paint on it and I just drilled in right there. It's, it's kind of weight forward. All right, so that's a pier bait for casting for Spanish mackerel, blue fish. You know, anything that you could bomb off of a pier or on the surf and catch a fish. Then, this is probably my oldest pier bait. This was handmade. That's lead. Okay, going back to a carved wood tail. All right, with just eyes screwed into it. Okay, ancient treble hooks. One's even broken off right here. And the history, supposedly, of this, that's the reason I keep this tag on it. A guy was trying to, you know, make these and sell them, I believe. Because, see, his idea was a notched, sort of a notched front, okay? And this one was called uh, the River Park Tiger by T.W. Koenig, Fairhope, Alabama, in the 50s. So this is probably my oldest in between these two are the oldest pier baits that I have. So that's a little history of my, my collection. It's way more extensive than this. I just picked out ones that would, that would kind of show you the direction I was going. I am selling this entire collection along with a bunch of new baits, swim baits, uh, segmented, um, soft plastics, egret, voodoo, uh, mullet, kick a mullet, because I really don't use lures that much anymore. I am I would just as soon fish a float rig or just a jig head with a soft plastic on it. This is nice. It's hanging in my living room. I've got it all displayed. And I'll finish up with this. This is a little treat. Look at this thing. I got this in a tackle box that I traded for. Twisties. It's like a match. It's match cover. Or like a match. You know, remember when matches were in a little cardboard thing and on the back there was a striker? Here it is. It says Mars. That's who the store was. 24 cents. These are called Twistons. Line sinkers. Twist them on or off. And because that sticker's on there, which I'm going to leave, Fitchburg, and I can see that says Massachusetts. And I believe it says the AM something company. Twistons are packed for the fisherman conveniently, the sinker that can be found conveniently when wanted. Simply tear off something what you would and twist on the line. No biting, no nothing. So what this was, was a pack of sinkers like matches. And you can see some were used. And all you did, all it was was a strip of lead. And you pulled one of these off like a, uh, it was just a little strips of lead. And you pulled it off and put it on your line like a split shot. Twist them on and off. Yeah. Now, isn't that ingenious? Now, I have no earthly idea what year this is from, but I hung on to these because I know that's old. 24 cents at the Mars store. So that's pretty cool. Nothing I'd ever use or in salt water or another, but 
it shows it's probably for like trout fishermen. There's like a little trout on there or something, you know, freshwater brook trout, rainbow trout, something like that. But that's very interesting. So I'll leave you with that because this is very old, I'm sure. You know, things just aren't the same anymore, folks. Nothing is the same. If I could literally go back to when I was 12, 16 years old and just stay there, I think I would. <laughs> I remember a lot of this stuff. So all this, my whole entire collection is nothing more than really just bringing me back. And of course I have uh, some an old ugly stick wonder rod and I've got a lot more lures. That is a long version here of my little vintage lure collection, just a smattering of it, and the first installment of Jetty Wolf Stories. And I'm planning on doing a lot more because of the fact that I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to tell you a story. All right? So if you have any sort of requests, like I mentioned before, I don't know, put it in the comments, give it a thumbs up, and that's the only way that YouTube will ever, ever promote any of my videos because they don't. And it's because nobody shares, nobody likes. I get a lot of comments, but their entire algorithm is definitely not helping out a small channel like mine. So check out always the description in below the video. And I know that means nothing because everybody's on a phone and you don't even know where that's at. As I said, the world's changed, folks. I don't know if it's for the best. I'll see you later, and thanks for watching.